Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Sunday, August the 1st, 2021, 8 o'clock in the morning. And of course, we are recording this on Saturday night. We're in 2 Kings chapter number 23. We don't do live on Sunday morning. I need to spend my time with the Lord before uh, meeting with God's people in the house of God. I think you get that. So let's go ahead and pray. And we're going to cover chapter number 23 in the book of 2 Kings. Go ahead and turn your Bibles there with me and we'll read it through together. Father, we love you. We ask your blessing on our study and our reading this morning. Help us to gain wisdom and understanding from it. I pray that we would do similarly in our lives as we see Josiah do in this chapter. We love you and praise you and ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So yesterday we learned of King Josiah who took the throne at only eight years of age. And he had the high priest uh, do some remodeling in the house of God. That high priest hired some contractors. They gave him offering money to do the work. And in the process of renovations, they found something. Guess what they found? The Bible. What a shocker. Who knew it had been missing? It had been missing for hundreds of years, as a matter of fact, and now the people have the word of God back in their hands. They'd heard about Moses and his law. They had still had some oral traditions passed down. <coughs> they know overall that they should be seeking and following the Lord God, but in terms of the feasts and the Passover and all those things... Nothing. They were gone. And so now Josiah has the word of God again. And so what we're going to see here in chapter number 23, we could title this chapter Cleaning a House. Josiah decides as he reads the book of the law to do what it says. What a concept, doing what the Bible says. It sounds like what a Christian ought to be doing. I've actually heard of some preachers recently saying that Christians should not be concerned with living biblical lives. Now, I'll tell you, if you hear a preacher make a statement like that, you should turn them off and never listen to another word they have to say. That is so ridiculous and contrary to Scripture, it's not even funny. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. So, <clears throat> we're supposed to, I just combined two verses, by the way, uh, from, from Joshua 1 and Psalm 1. But uh, we're supposed to know the book. We're supposed to live the book. James 1, 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, do what it says. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. We're supposed to live the Bible. We're supposed to obey the Bible. And so Josiah is going to start doing that. We got a little bit of a lengthy chapter here. But we're going to see it. We're just going to read much of it. And it's all pretty self-explanatory. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to see how Josiah indeed cleans house. By the way, if you're reading the Bible, the Bible shows you something you're doing that you shouldn't be doing, you need to clean house and get that out of your life. If it's showing you something you're not doing, you're supposed to do. Well, then you need to <clears throat> get rid of those things that are keeping you from doing it and start doing the right thing. So here we go. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse number one. And the king sent, this is Josiah, <clears throat> and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. So all the leaders of the people, he gets them together, gathers them around. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, <clears throat> which was found in the house of the Lord. So he didn't skip anything. He didn't gloss over anything all of the words. You know, we don't have the right to read the Bible, and if we find something we don't like, ignore it or get rid of it. We're supposed to live according to all of the words. Verse 3, and the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord. We've talked about this before. A covenant is an agreement, a, a, a legally binding, in a sense, agreement to walk after the Lord. This was the agreement. God, we're going to walk after you and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. 
And all the people stood to the covenant. So everyone listening to Josiah read stood in agreement that they are making this covenant to God, that they're going to, with all their heart, with all their soul, they're going to obey the word of God. Verse 4, and the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, he's the one who found the book of the law, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove, and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem. That means outside of Jerusalem. In the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. So the first thing he does is says, okay, all of you priests, go through the house of God and everything that is idolatrous, everything that points to Baal or honors Baal, get it out. And then he burns it all down and destroys them and he carries the ashes out of the city. Verse five, and he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. So everybody that was involved in idolatrous worship says he put them down. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear someone says, I had to put my dog down or we had to put our cat down, that means you end their life. And so best I can understand, here Josiah has them put to death. Verse 6, And he brought out of the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem under the brook Kidron and burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it to small, it's small to powder, and thereof upon the groves, graves of the children of the people. So he takes all these groves, he stamps them to powder, and he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the woman wove hangings for the grove. And I learned something interesting here. I learned that in the Hebrew, the word that is sometimes translated Sodomite is a word that means prostitutes. So when we hear the word sodomite, sometimes we think of homosexuality, but I'm, I'm, I'm understanding here and, and I am relying on the truthfulness and the knowledge of a Bible scholar, uh, a Hebrew language scholar, and so I can only take their word for it. And so it kind of fits here, though. He break down the houses of the sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the woman wove hangings for the grove. So I'm told also that uh, ladies would take and make uh, like needlepoint uh, pieces of cloth and, and decorative cloth and hang them as in, in worship to the idols and the false gods. And so these houses or tents that are in the house of God and around the house of God were houses of prostitution where they would actually use sexual acts to worship their false idols and gods. Now, that's all from study. That could all be incorrect and wrong, but it's interesting to consider and very possible given the context of our passage here. <clears throat> and he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba, and break down the high places of the gates that were in the entering into the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. So now those high places, and if you remember, Josiah's grandfather was Hezekiah, and then his father was Manasseh. Hezekiah had torn down all these high places also, but then Manasseh built them back up again. All the good that Hezekiah did, Manasseh undone. Undid? And, did. and uh, now Josiah has found the word of God. So he's undoing everything that his father did to the glory of God. Verse 9. Nevertheless, the priest of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. So he's spreading this message across all of Judah and all of Jerusalem. We are going to serve God now. No more idols, no more Baal, no more Moloch, uh, no more any idolatry whatsoever. Verse 11, and he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the sun and the entering into the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, 
which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. So he's destroying everything that was ever used in idolatrous worship. And the altars that were on uh, the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made, and the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down and break them down from thence and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. So even the idols that his father made, he tears them down, he breaks them into dust, and he throws the dust in the river. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had builded for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he break in pieces the images, and cut down the groves, and filled their places with the bones of men. And so you see here, Solomon started all this by marrying the wrong kind of women. And women can do the same thing. They can uh, unite with the wrong kind of men and be led astray. Verse 15, Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, and the high place which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, had made. Notice that's how Jeroboam is always referenced, the, the man who made Israel to sin. Uh, what, a, what a reputation to have. What a thing to be known for. He had made both that altar and the high place to be break down, and burned the high place, and stamped it to small to powder, and burned the grove. Josiah is burning it all down, and it deserves to be burned down. Verse 16, and as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchers that were there in the mount, and sent, and took the bones out of the sepulchers, and burned them upon the altar, and polluted it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. <clears throat> then he said, What title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the sepulcher of the man of God, which came from Judah and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. This is a really interesting couple of verses here. So they get to this cemetery, and it's full of the bones of, of idolaters and false worship. And so he has all those bones exhumed, and he's burning these bones on this altar. He doesn't want anything left. But he sees this large tombstone, and it proclaims uh, the prophecy that's happening right now. 326 years before this day, an unnamed prophet, if you remember from 1 Kings, I want to say chapter 14, I might be wrong. An unnamed prophet said that a man named Josiah would be sent of God to tear down the idols that Israel and Judah were worshiping. And now this very thing is happening. And Josiah is in the cemetery where that prophet's bones are buried, and he sees the prophecy. 326 years before this day, the act and the name of the man doing it was prophesied. And here it is happening. And so what does Josiah do? Verse 17, then he said, what title is that? That I see. And the men of the city told him, It is the sepulchre of the man of God, which came from Judah, and proclaim these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, Josiah says, Let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took away. And did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. So everywhere Josiah goes, he tears all the idols down, all the high places, all the altars where the incense was burned. He destroys it all. Verse 20, and he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. And the king commanded all the people saying, look at this, keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. When's the last time we read that? I don't remember. Was it in the time of David? Was it in the time of Solomon? I don't remember reading it about Solomon. Maybe David? Maybe Saul? Look what this says. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel. 
nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor the kings of Judah. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was hold to the Lord in Jerusalem. According to that verse, it seems to be saying that the Passover hadn't been observed since the days of the judges. Uh, that would mean that Saul didn't observe the Passover. That would mean David did not observe the Passover. I don't remember. I'd have to go back and double check it uh, to make sure that that's what it's saying. Verse 24, more house cleaning. He's not done. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. That's a big statement. Let's read that verse again. 25. Like unto him was there no king before him, that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him, no king like Josiah, who followed the Lord with as much of his heart and soul as Josiah did. That's something to aspire to, isn't it? Verse 26, Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him with him with all. So God says, you know what? I'm grateful for what Josiah is doing. I'm glad that he's doing what he's doing. But Manasseh, I'm not going back on what I said I was going to do. Judah is going to suffer punishment for what Manasseh led them to do. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as I have removed Israel. And will cast off this city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Now we're going to hear about Josiah's death. In his days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates. And King Josiah went against him, and he slew him at Megiddo, when he had seen him. And what that means is Pharaoh Necho slew Josiah. Verse 30, his servants, Josiah's servants, carried him in a chariot dead from Megiddo and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own sepulcher. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in his father's stead. So Josiah is now dead. The, the king whose heart was closest to God of all kings. Verse 31, Jehoahaz, now his son is reigning. Josiah's son, Jehoahaz. Keep watching, it's not going to last very long. Jehoahaz, uh, Jehoahaz was 20 and 3 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamudal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Come on! We can't get a break from these guys. What is happening? Hezekiah, amazing godly king. His son Manasseh, incredibly wicked evil king. His son Josiah, amazing incredible godly king. His son Jehoahaz, wicked evil king. Can we not get any consistency here? Verse 33, and Pharaoh Necho put him in bands at Riblah in the land of Hamath that he might not reign in Jerusalem. And he put the land to a tribute of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. So Pharaoh Necho, the king of Egypt, captures, uh, what did I, Jehoahaz, and he's not going to let him be king. Now he's exacting tribute in Judah. He wants a hundred, what is it, a hundred talents of silver and one talent of gold. And Pharaoh Necho, verse 34, made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in the room of Josiah, his father, and turned his name to Jehoiakim and took Jehoahaz away and he came to Egypt and died there. So here the king of Egypt is, is controlling the elections in Judah. And he takes Jehoahaz out of office and puts him in prison in Egypt. And he takes uh, the other son of Josiah, Jehoiakim, and he makes him the king. 
but he makes sure Jehoiakim gets the money from the people. Verse 35, Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land, every of every one according to his taxation, to give it unto Pharaoh Necho. And so here Jehoiakim is taxing the Judeans uh, to pay the money to the king of Egypt. Verse 36, Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Zebudah, and, and uh, the daughter of Padiah of Rumah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. Are we surprised at that? I don't think we are. So, there you have it, Josiah, cleaning house. What's the takeaway? Clean house. When you read the Bible and you learn all that you're doing that you're not supposed to be doing, burn it to the ground. Get rid of the dust. Tear it down. If you're doing something uh, that God is not pleased with, get rid of it out of your life. Don't abide it. Don't allow it to stay. If you're not doing something you're supposed to do, well, get with it. Get it done. Amen. All right. We got church today. I'm going to cut you loose. As always, like, love, share the post. Please let people know we're out there. Have a great Lord's Day. Hey, we have uh, Water Wars tonight, 9 a.m. Sunday school, 10 a.m. service, uh, 5 p.m. Sunday school, 545 service, Water Wars after that, and then and what else do we have? Uh, Vacation Bible School. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. Children ages four and up through the sixth grade. We'd love to have you there, especially if you got young ones. Bring them on out. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow.